Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing well for anyone new to the channel. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and in today's episode, we are gonna be continuing on with our VGC 2021 Series 8 content. We've got another restricted to feature today, and as always, there will be a poker paste down in the description below. And if you stick around to the end of the episode, you'll be able to grab the rental for this team, try it out for yourself. So you can see the team is based all around Sogaleo, one of the new restricteds that we got access to. Steel psychic type and then we've got uh, the combination that is going to be the more common one you probably come across it if you haven't it's going to be a good video today so stick around for it it's going to be that combination between that and spectre air where you bulldoze proc your weakness policy lower the speed on a opposing target and then just go to town with a plus two so galeo that um is ridiculously strong spectre gives a phenomenal support got the sash in there we pretty much need it to help the Sogaleo setup. Then we got Tapu Fini, helps with burns and things like that, slow game down. Uh, it's got support options, light screen, heal pulse, uh, nature's madness, icy wind as well, another speed control method there. And then we got Porygon 2, helps out a bunch because as you can probably tell already, Spectre, opposing Spectre and opposing um, Calyrex, Shadow Rider are gonna be a bit of an issue. So Porygon 2 in a Trick Room mod help out with that a bunch. Uh, we've got the Moltres to also support that. And then for a Trick Room kind of big attacker we've got glastria the ice horse and that makes up the team we'll get into the ins and outs of it as we get into the battles today so i hope you enjoyed today's episode as always leave your comments down below let me know what restricteds you'd like to see played and featured next on the channel i'd always love to uh, hear your opinions because there is so many restricteds to feature but without further ado let's jump into today's okay let's get some music on and first up we have a team of lunala Tapu Fini, Landorus, Draco's Alt, Incineroar, and Whimsicott. So this is an interesting team. Obviously, the restricted here is going to be that Lunala. Uh, ghost type, not the fastest threat, considering we've got some ridiculously fast ghost threats in the format. Uh, so not too worried about that. I kind of would worry about maybe Trick Room, maybe Wide Guard on it. And it's still going to hit hard um, and still can threaten Sogaleo pretty pretty for good damage, you know? So it's not something to underestimate at all. I think we'll go with the Spectre and Sogaleo lead. It's what we want in the back. Do we need, like Moltres isn't bad here, but again, it's not great against the Draco's ult. Draco's ult causes us all sorts of issues. So I'm kind of leaning more towards P2 and then Glastria because P2 Glastria, especially with the Assault Vest, we can do a lot of work against this team if we can get it into a Trick Room environment. So that's what we're going to lock in with and uh, we'll see how we get on in this first one today. Going to be a tricky one, obviously. Draco's is one of those Pokemon that I think does well in this format if supported right, especially if it's a Sandrush variant. You can do a lot of work, and even if not, then, you know, um, the hustle ability on it, we've seen it before in previous series with the Life Orb, but just does disgusting amounts of damage. But we are going to see Lunala, and we are going to see Draco's ult. Okay. Well, I mean, there's a couple of options here, you know. Uh, we go after the Lunala. Or we go after the Draco's ult. The big one for me would be probably going Bulldoze and then into Draco's ult with a max Quake. Um, I'm not too worried about the Lunala taking Sogaleo down. And yeah, I think that's probably going to be our best option. So we'll go for that. Um, Lunala is one of those strange ones. It's like not, not a Pokemon to be underestimated in the slightest. But at the same time, I'm a bit like... What's it doing in this format, you know? You don't see it too often. Um, I know it's a lot of players' favorite Pokemon, restricted-wise. So I can understand players wanting to play it, but I don't really know what it's doing. Support-wise, it's got a lot of options, of course. Trick Room, Wide Guard, and that could be an issue here, you know? Trick Room going up, but we do have Glastria in the back. We are going to see... Um, what is it going to be? What is it going to be? Is it going to be the Draco's ult? No, the Lunala. Oh dear. Well, I mean, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. We're not going to see a wide guard. We're going to be able to get rid of the Draco's ult here. Sogaleo should take an attack from the Lunala. Um... Oh, it's scarfed. <laughs> okay, well, I didn't see that coming. Um... Okay. I don't know if, like, I think, like, scarf Draco's ult. I don't know if it's the best option it's just scarfed you can't really get the speed that you need you're not going to outspeed uh zassian regieleki uh shadow rider calyrex there's a bunch of stuff and even like 
Dragapult, you're not outspeeding. So it makes it difficult as a Scarfmon because you're not getting the jump on those kind of big Pokemon, the big fast threats in the format. But we do manage to get a special defense boost in the process here, which is going to help us a bunch against that Lunala because it is predominantly a special attacker. So it is going to be throwing out some big, uh, big attacks. Max Phantasm, here we go into Sogaleo. But we take that like a true Lion Champ and uh, sup that up. And uh, with the, the, the Full Metal Body as well, we are going to be able to uh, dodge any defense drops as well, which is always useful. So, we'll see what my opponent comes out with next, because I think our next kind of target's going to be the Lunala. You know, we can Snarl here with Spectria. We're in a pretty decent position um, to do it. Tapu Fini coming out. Yeah, and do we go for the uh, Sunsteel Strike? Might be an option now to Snarl Sunsteel Strike into Tapu Fini. Just remove that from the field, and then it frees up like Moltres in the back for the late game to come in. Um, so, we'll go for that. Uh, I do worry about weakness policy on the Lunala. A little bit. A little bit. Um, we've got the Misty Terrain up. Is it going to benefit anyone? Well, it kind of benefits us. Because the other option here is we could go for Max Lightning. If we were really worried. But I think like a defense boost is probably going to be quite nice uh, regardless. So yeah, let's do that. Finny switching straight out. Being baited. And Incineroar coming in. Alright, well... The bait is real. The other option there, you know, going through my head, would be to Max Quay to get another special um, special defense drop. Uh, special defense boost, sorry. So it just makes it easier to take attacks from Lunala. The worry is here, weakness policy, obviously. Which we don't see, which is ideal. So we get the Steel Spike in. The Lunala still not going to be hitting as hard. Man, still does, like, so much damage to Incineroar, you know. Um... And another Phantasm coming out. But this time, we'll take it even better than before. And the final one, what we can do is just Snarl again. Max Quake this time into the Incineroar. If the Finny decides to switch in. Like, we, we're picking up a knockout. We could even Shadow Ball at this point, you know. Um, into the Lunala. We're probably better off just going for Snarl. Because it puts us in a way better position, I think. Mm, does it? Does it? No, I think, I think we Shadow Ball. We get it in range. At least... And then we max quake. That sets us up way better, I think. Because the plus one special defense is going to be super beneficial anyway. So it's kind of acting like a snarl. But we're picking up a knockout at the same time. So it kind of works in a roundabout way like that. And for my opponent, you, well, it's just very difficult for them at this point, isn't it? To really gain any sort of momentum. I think a good idea is probably take down the Spectre, but at the same time, the argument there to take down the Sogaleo because it's a big thing that's just picking knockups, knockups, knockouts up every turn, if I can speak. So there we go. Yeah, I mean, Sogaleo, Sean, it's sheer bulk here. You know, it's like Lunala, nothing to scoff at. It's a very strong ghost type. Uh, these attacks are like super effective. And we're sitting here taking it like an absolute champ. I know we've got the support, but I mean, this is just one, one of the mods that the team's so capable of. This lead is so threatening. This is one of the reasons why I want to feature it today. The thing is going to be very prominent on the ladder going forward, you know. Um, and we, we haven't had to switch at all. We're in an amazing position. Snarl and then Sunsteel. Uh, Snarl and, and well, uh, now nah, we'll Sunsteel Strike because I don't, I don't want, I would prefer Sogaleo to, uh, to not go down here. Because the wild charge of recoil will go down, so it would be a 3-0 victory instead of a 4. But very good game to my opponent. And um, yeah, it's a nice way to, for us to kick off. And that's th that's the thing. It gives us the example of how good that lead can be. And, you know, this is a lead that you're going to need to be aware of. The, the big reason was to uh, that this is going to be played a lot. And you're going to have to think outside the box for ways to kind of, I guess, play around it. Answers to it, you know. There are definite answers to it in the format. It's just... If you're kind of not prepared for it going into the format, it can catch you out and um, it's not not the most fun, especially when it sets up and you think, how am I going to get back into this game now? Like, plus two Sogaleo, can't intimidate it and it's got like a Spectre sitting beside it just supporting it with all these like amazing support moves. So, you know, there's a reason why it's been good. Well, 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 what do we got up next? Klefki, uh, Seismitoad, Shadow Calyrex, Mandibuzz, Ferrothorn and Rotom Heat. 
What a mad mix of Pokemon. Uh, not sad to see it at all. Klefki obviously got the Prankster ability. Going to be able to do all sorts of um, annoying, annoying support stuff. Uh, the Seismitoads you generally see on rain teams because of the Swift Swim ability there. But we're not seeing that today. I wonder if Klefki has got rain. Potentially does it get rain dance? It would make sense, maybe. Uh, it supports the Ferrothorn as well. Ferrothorn a bit of a pain for us. And definitely the uh, the Shadow Calyrex a big, big old pain as well. Um, do we go Moltres here? Moltres could be good, but I think Moltres may be better as a late game Pokemon. The, the other thing is the also the Rotom Heat is a bit of an issue as well. Like Spectre is, is one of those Pokemon that you kind of want to keep for Rotom Heat late game. I think we'll go Spectre, I think we'll go Sogaleo. I think we'll go P2 because it gives us a nice resistance against the Shadow Rider. It gives us Trick Room mods as well if we need it. And we'll go Moltres. And uh, this could go pretty south because they've got a lot of threats that could do good work against us. Like the Rotom Heat. Um, if we can't deal with it well enough between like Sogaleo Spectra. Uh, could get pretty dicey um, quite early on. But the one thing that I do like about Sogaleo, I don't see many people running on it, is the, the uh, facility run... Wide Guard, I think it's such good support in this format. It's not something you're going to use a lot, but when you're maxing Sogaleo a lot of the time, you know, it makes a lot of sense to um, to be able to utilize that 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 move. Okay, well, what are we going to see here? The Mandibuzz, I'm worried about foul play from the Mandibuzz, which would come onto the Sogaleo, which would not be ideal. Um, especially if we proc our weakness policy and we miss the knockout because of like reflect or something like that ah no 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 i think what we'll do is we'll go for this we'll get this i'm confident that a max lightning is going to pick up the knockout onto uh onto old mandy here let's see what the clef key does problem is mandibuzz is such a tanky pokemon you know it's one of those pokemon that you just you you can't ignore because it's got the, the the support options to be so disruptive you can't give it room and when you want to attack it you've got to be sure that you're going to pick up a knockout against it because otherwise it can go like i said at the start coming into this match very south very quickly okay thunder wave that is not ideal because now we are not going to be able to uh bulldoze prior although it might work out all right if we see a foul play maybe i don't know thunder wave not so hot thunder wave klefki and taunt coming out okay well we're gonna ah, there we go this is bad for a couple of reasons now because um the issue is the foul play if we get thunder waved is gonna cause us all sorts of issues um, because they're going to be able to get the foul player off before we can attack. Um, I'm going to have to just shadow ball the Klefki. I think, like, is there any point of kind of... Okay, I think, no, we just go for it. I think I'll go for, yeah... I'll go for the Steel Spike just to get a defense boost. It might be useful later on. I don't know if it will be. But we're going to see Thunder Wave foul play. Yep. Jeez. Well, this combo is definitely doing a better job than what we've faced previously. Um, and we get the Steel Spike off. Okay. Well... The problem is now, um, is the Calyrex coming in, Astral Barrage is going to do all sorts of bad things to us. <laughs> so, it's not ideal. I think, yeah, I mean, we saw in our last video, like, Shadow Calyrex is a team I featured. I think it's probably the best restricted in the format. Huh, we don't see Seismic, I don't see Seismic Todd. Okay. Hmm. We can take down... The problem is here, like the Seismitoad, I don't want Spectre to get its Sash chipped. P2 coming in might not be a bad option. 
and we get rid of the clef key right now i think and keep spectra to, for an end game because if we've got the sash it gives us a little bit of security against shadow calyrex um but without the sash we're pretty useless and we're paralyzed anyway so we're better off just kind of keeping that tool for later on with what we expect to be in the back anyway <clears throat> might not be though you know we get the special attack boost which is ideal Ooh. Ooh, if Sidemato doesn't take down Sogaleo here, which it may... Okay. It's Ferrothorn. Okay, so there's not Shadow Rex. We're going to see Sidemato. It's probably going to go off Max Quake into Sogaleo. Uh, because we're paralyzed as well. We're not in a position to be able to take this, I don't feel. Unless they go after the Spectre, but I don't see what reason why they would. <clears throat> But without the... Yeah, Max Quake. Special defense boost as well is not helping us a bunch. Okay, this is actually really good. Because it means Sogaleo gets to stick around a bit longer. And get some big damage into the... Um, the Ferrothorn, which is ideal. Yeah, this is perfect. And if that Seismatoda is special based, then this, this special defense boost helps out massively. Okay. Here we go. Gonna have to be, <clears throat> we're gonna have to play around a little bit, I think. Um, and it depends what kind of set that Ferrothorn's got as well. So, my thinking would be, we need to get the Trick Room up. I think they're gonna go Max Quake into Sogaleo now. The problem is, <clears throat> we've got to try and get a Trick Room up. I'm gonna switch Sogaleo out. I know we've got our boosts and stuff like that, but all we've got right now, this is maybe the argument where Protect's better. Because a max moves. Because we can't protect. Like, otherwise we would be able to. And we could kind of retain those boosts at this point. Um, sit behind the protect, take the move, and then kind of utilize it after. I'm just banking on Max Quake coming out. That's that's really what we've got to see. Yeah, okay, we get it. And iron defense, perfect, okay. we It's not perfect. It's not perfect by any means, but... It's better than losing P2 here, which we'll probably do the next turn. Actually, the Trick Room's really bad. The Trick Room's terrible here. Because um, we really need to nasty plot. Let's go Ice Beam into the Ferrothorn. Just try and get some chip onto that. And just protect Moltres. Let's see what the Seismitoad does. Because I guess it kind of deters the Seismitoad from using a Max uh, Geyser. We might just get Body Prep. Oh no, they're going for another Iron Defense. They're going to get fully boosted up. <clears throat> a Freeze here would be ideal. We have got the plus one as well. So this will do a good chunk. Oh! <laughs> he said it and we got it. Okay. Uh, there's the Max Geyser. If this takes down P2 now. Oh, then to Moltres. Okay. Well, that's the last turn of your Max turns. We need a Fiery Wrath and an Ice Beam into the Ferrothorn here. <clears throat> the Freeze is huge for us, in all honesty. Like, we wouldn't win this, I don't think, without the Freeze. Or it'd be very, very difficult. So the Seismitoad's done now um, with its max moves. It's probably got Swift Swim, so it's not going to be able to move in this Trick Room. So we are free just to go Fiery Wrath and Ice Beam into this Ferrothorn. Yeah, we're going to see the Protect there. The Freeze is huge. The Freeze is huge. I'm not even going to. I'm not even going to mess around. Ferrothorn's one of those Pokemon. You know, Stu and I over in the Discord. We had a friendly tournament like last weekend and Stu got to the final of it and he was playing Ferrothorn. His team was really cool. But Ferrothorn, I think, was the one thing that stuck out for me and his team has just been one of those Pokemon that I think such a good shout in this format. You know, if you want a trick room, like if you want a trick room check for most of the time, you've got to be careful around things like Torkoal. But other than that, the Iron Defense set just bodies so much stuff um in this format All right we'll recover with p2 and um, 
Yeah, well, Fury, Fury Wrath. We should take a move from Seismitoad, you know? I don't really know what the Klefki is going to be doing, it, but again, it's it's kind of done a really good support job in, the, in this match in general, hasn't it? You know, it's been classic prankster. Disrupting Pokemon. Thunder Wave, though, not something you generally see too much anymore, because just because of the fact that, you know, it's got a um, lot of accuracy. It's a bit more risky to use. Liquidation, so it's actually a physical Seismic Todd, which is... Okay, okay. Way more interesting, and it has got Life Orb on it. Um, How many turns of Trick Room we got left? One. Could we use this turn maybe to Nasty Plot? Yeah, because they may protect Seismic Todd here in the last turn of Trick Room, yeah. And then the only way to slow us down, really, take advantage of this with Klefki is to um, to Thunder Wave us, which is what they're probably gonna gonna do. Okay, they got the Dazzle. Uh, I mean, we take that pretty well. We got the Berserk, and then the next turn we're gonna have the Trick Room, protect, uh, take down Klefki with P two. Hopefully, we've got enough to take it down with a special attack boost, and then. Will there be rain up on the field? No, the rain will disappear. So it might be worth not trick rooming. Because Moltres allowed speed size method without the rain. It's just a thunder wave though, that's the issue. That's what I worry about. Um hmm. I'm gonna trick room. I'm gonna trick room, I think. And protect. Like, we, yeah, I could plan to do. Because at the, the end of the day, like, Sogaleo can come in and it can earthquake and it's going to be slower than. Okay. And it's going to be slower than Seismic Todd, regardless of, of the rain or not. Liquidation and Thunder Wave. That damage is nasty. And we're paralyzed! Okay, well, the rain stops. This is where it gets tricky because the Thunder Wave comes out onto Moltres and we go down, we go down. I'll try the Trick Room again, but they're kind of in this lock situation now where if they do that, they got to concentrate down on Moltres. Oh, okay. Oh, they've got Rain Dance. So definitely the Trick Room is the best, the best player, unless they go after P2 again here. But then if they do, they just lose everything to, uh, to Moltres. So as long as we're not parried, we should be all right. Okay, there we go. Man, we've dragged this one out. I'm saying it now. We've dragged this one out like no one's business. Okay, Sogaleo can come in. And then we got Spectre as a kind of last resort to help us out at the very end if we need it. Uh, we'll Ice Beam and we'll Earthquake. And that should lock the game. Finally. This is a nasty team though. For for like Pokemon that you generally don't see too much. It's a nice strategy to see like an opponent use these Pokemon uh, and really uh, do well with them. Do well with them. Come on. Okay. Well, we take that. We're going to go down to a liquidation, I think now. Man, these powers are horrible. Horrible. <laughs> okay. P2 ga down finally. The light screen wears off, but we got specs to come in and we can do some work with Spectria. <clears throat> I think the rain dance has kind of saved our bacon a bit in this. Obviously the freeze helped us out a bunch as well. Uh, let's get rid of the, let's just get rid of this Seismitoad. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we've not got many options here with that. Uh, I don't really want to earthquake at this point. Okay. Klefki gonna go for Dazzle again. Trying to stall out this rain. Sunsteel Strike coming out. I mean, we do have Wide Guard if we want, but, you know. Paralyzed, paralyzed. Everything paralyzed. Go for the same again. Could still go all terribly wrong. We actually need to move. If we don't, if we're all paralyzed all the time, then it's 
Very difficult, isn't it? But Sogaleo coming out on top once again. We get fortunate in this one for sure with the freeze on the Ferrothorn. I think that would have been a very difficult mon to deal with. We would have really needed to position Moltres, get the nasty plot up to really do the damage we needed to on it. You know, we just weren't hitting it hard enough with the... Uh, oh, come on. Come on. But this is where Wide Guard can kind of come in handy as long as we're not paralyzed. Um, let's not lose to a uh, uh, Klefki, please. <laughs> Spectre is paralyzed here. We're done. We're done. It's very close. Very, very hacksy game all around from uh, both both ends. But very good game to my opponent. And at the very least, I hope you guys found it entertaining because that is the main thing about it. So we do manage to pick up a win. We've got to see the ins and outs of the team pretty much. We didn't really get to feature the Tapu Fini there. The Fini obviously would have been great in that match for the reasons it would have been good against the Seismic Toad. And it would have also been very useful against um, the, the Paralysis and, and the Thunder Waves and things like that. So um, that would have been ideal. Although we couldn't really compensate for the fact that Shadow Calyrex could have come out as well. So we needed the Moltres and I think the Trick Room really was something that was going to be very useful throughout that match. Um, so that wraps up the two games. We'll jump over now and we'll get you guys that rental code. Right friends, here it is. There's the rental for today's team. It is the Sogaleo and Spectria build. Uh, and if you try it out, I really hope you enjoy it. It's, uh, you know, we're pretty high on the ladder at the minute as well. So we're not playing like um, lower down opponents. We're playing decent opponents and I think even though we faced that like weird team in the last one we're still facing things and kind of coming out on top was a little bit of RNG on our side in that last one but I mean the team's performing well the Pokemon performing well um but if you do try it out as I say, I hope you have enjoy it and it's a good thing to experience and it's definitely a good thing to identify this lead as something as a big threat. Have fun with the team. Have a great weekend. Let me know down in the comments section what restrictors you'd really like to see going forward because I've got a bunch lined up, but I also would really like to factor in the, the case that, you know, you, there's certain things that you would like to see. Ice Rider Calyrex is definitely a Pokemon I think is phenomenal. So we'll be featuring that at some point next week. So we've got room to, to feature some other things as well. We'll bring more rental teams as we go. Remember, there is the Friendly going on this evening over on our Discord. So we've got the Friendly Tournament kicking off on the Switch. If you want to get involved in that, I'll throw up the uh, ID of the tournament. All the details there now. Hop over to our Discord. There'll be a link down in the description. Join the community. Get involved with the, uh, the competitive side over there. It's a lot of fun. And um, if you do play it, I hope you have a great time. Enjoy it and uh, best of luck. Have a great weekend, friends. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. And I'll catch you for another episode very soon. So until then, take care and bye-bye.